Hello and welcome to this video. Today we're going to take a look at this Swedish M39 grid coat. Uh, this is an item that I've had in my collection for actually quite a while. Uh, but I haven't really gotten any use out of it, uh, so I thought I might as well do a video on it before I get rid of it. Of course, jumping straight into it, Swedish items of the M39 model uh, has been available on the surplus market for quite a while. Uh, and so uh, these are still fairly available today. Um, the uh, stocks are dwindling, but they're not uh, as expensive as certain other types of uh, great coats and so on. Uh, and as a result of them being uh, easily available, uh, they have, uh, in many cases, these have been converted to German World War II great coats, and the same goes for the M39 uh, uniforms uh, themselves, uh, you know, the regular coats and so on. Uh, but luckily, that trend seems to have been gone for a while now. So. And just jumping straight into the history of this thing, uh, of course, leading up to World War II, Sweden was using primarily the M10 and the M23 uniforms. Uh, the M10 was a light grey uh, uniform made mostly for looking good rather than uh, field practicality, uh, which I'm sorry is going to offend some of the, some of the Swedes out there. Uh, and the M23 was a uh, bit da more darker, almost a brown colour actually. Uh, and then in leading up to World War II, the M39 was introduced and, and they continue many of the earlier sort of uh, main cuts of the uniform. Uh, so the, especially the great coat uh, has some uh, similarities to the uh, earlier patterns uh, of uh, uniform, primarily the sharp color on the coat, uh, sort of the general shape of it, and also that it has five uh, buttons going up here, and of course it's double-breasted, uh, that's uh, sort of the main thing. Other than that, there's not really a whole lot to it. Uh, Sweden used this uh, uh, up until the 50s, uh, at least in main service. Uh, the Home Guard, uh, the way I understand it, the Home Guard used these in unmodified condition uh, into the Cold War. Uh, uh, so that's interesting to see, uh, but in the mid-1950s these would have been cut down and converted to M55 tunics, which were very similar to uh, M58 tunics, which we have right here, this one. So, uh, so the grid coat generally made to sort of look like this. Uh, I'll find a picture for you to show, uh, because that was the design that Sweden uh, wanted to go with, and they knew that grid coats were not super practical in the field uh, if you're doing maneuvers, in, at least in the snow, uh, if you're going uh, in uneven terrain, uh, a great coat isn't the most practical piece of winter clothing you can wear. It's much better to have a bit more of a roomy uh, coat where you can put layers underneath uh, uh, and allow you to move a little bit better. So that, that was the fate of a lot of these. Uh, of course, uh, a lot of them survived uh, in an altered condition to this day. Uh, so uh, it seems to me at least that uh, uh, they didn't get most of them. So, uh, With that being said, let's take a closer look at some of the features of this thing. Uh, and let's uh, get to it. Okay, so starting at the top here we have shoulder straps on either side for attaching rank insignia. Uh, kind of short typical Swedish uh, shoulder straps. We have buttoning. Uh, as I said, we have five, one, two, three, four, five, sorry. <laughs> so five buttons for if you want to close it all the way up. Uh, in actual service and in pictures, the it seems that uh, wearing it with the collar open and with the collar closed was both uh, done. Uh, not exactly sure if, if what the regulations say on that, uh, but you can do it. Uh, and it, this is made with the intention of wearing it open like this. Uh, and, you know, if you want to, you can button this open if you want. Uh, and mentioning the buttons, we have all of these are standard Swedish oxidized three crowns, which is the uh, main army button for Sweden. Uh, moving down, we have two pockets 
on either side. Uh, and these pockets are actually quite roomy. Uh, not entirely sure about the dimensions, but you can definitely fit your hand in there even with uh, heavy mittens on, uh, which is uh, very practical, I think. Then we have the cuffs, uh, just straight turn up cuffs, sewn shut here at top, of course. Uh, uh, very austere from that point of view in some ways and of course the length of the coat uh, this is supposed to reach down to your knees or a little below your knees uh, if it's sized correctly turning it around we have uh, nothing really fancy going on in the back uh, no pleats here just a very straight sort of seam going down here then we have a belt uh, at the back non-adjustable so this isn't really that much of so this doesn't really have that much practical use uh, it's more just to kind of keep it together and uh, look cool I suppose uh, I suppose uh, officers would have had could have had these uh, tailored down a little bit to fit them better or have a bigger one or whatever um, uh, n but again not 100% sure on that uh, and as we move down we have the split at the back uh, these would have been used by uh, you know, basically everyone in the Swedish army uh, um, being able to open it at the back if you're for example riding a horse uh, or riding a motorcycle stuff like that uh, this would have been practical to have uh, and unlike many other designs it's closed by hooks and these rings as well uh, as you can see this is Hang on, so I just realized that there's actually no hook, uh, there's just two rings. Uh, so I have no idea what's going on there, but uh, well, maybe mine is defective. One thing that I forgot to mention is that these great coats would have also been used by Norway and I'm fairly sure Finland as well, uh, by the way, of Swedish volunteers. Uh, uh, the Norwegian use of this came with the uh, police troops, uh, so-called because they didn't want to call them what they actually were, which were uh, infantry uh, units set up in Sweden for the liberation of Norway. Uh, and they were trained basically like normal uh, army units, uh, mostly in infantry tactics and so on. Uh, and basically what you would see if, if you have a Norwegian coat is to have a... Norwegian coat of arms button instead of these uh, made the exact same style just with a Norwegian lion on it and if you're wondering what a Norwegian button of that time would have looked like this is it uh, of course uh, this is not a Swedish produced button this is a uh, English produced button but uh, the same motif basically, uh, just with a uh, slightly more rougher uh, finish that the Swedish ones had. Okay, so quickly showing you what the inside looks like. Not really anything special, we have reinforcement along the split here. Uh, nothing really unusual. We have a liner material that goes down to the waist, focus, down to the waist, uh, and then the liner, oh. the liner also covers the sleeve, goes almost all the way down, uh, of course on both sides. Then we have the size markings here, we have what to me looks, we have what to me looks like 1943, uh, 100, which of course is the size, and then we have the typical Swedish uh, army property crown right here. We also have a marking down at the uh, almost bottom of the lining here. It says 13 74, which I am not entirely sure what that is supposed to mean. Uh, we also have what seems to be some handwritten letters here. Uh, also, not sure what they mean. And then we have a faded 100 on this side uh, which I would guess uh, means the same as the size and the size is of course 100 centimeters which is the recommended 
uh, chest circumference. So I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this beautiful piece of Scandinavian equipment. Uh, in my opinion, it's a very good looking great coat. It's very stylish, but it's not the most practical. Uh, as I mentioned before, the fabric isn't very thick, so it doesn't offer the same kind of properties as a uh, proper thick uh, great coat maybe would. Uh, and that's uh, probably one of the reasons why they got rid of them uh, after a while. But anyways, uh, as I said, I hope you enjoyed this and thank you for watching. Uh, as always, any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. Uh, and until next time, goodbye.